Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look in on Blue, the 55 gallon DIY worm bin that uh, we made out of cutting a food grade barrel in half and then screwing it back together long ways. I'll put the measurements in below as to how big is Blue. But I'm 5'5 five five and I think we're about the same height. So there is approximately 20 pounds of my mixed species compost worms in here, which are red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers. Um, this bin runs on the wedge method, and I'll put up a diagram of what that is. Uh, but today, we are going to walk through the wedge method as I do the evaluation and care of this bin. Last time we've looked in on this was 20 days ago. So generally what we start with is we start with the finished end over here and try and get a little bit harvested off the top. But I've had uh, something of a, a cover on it, so I'm looking at this thinking that it's probably a little bit too damp in order to get any sort of harvest from it. So we're just going to kind of fluff through this a little bit and then um, continue on evaluating as we go and taking any sort of large food that we find on the way or sticks and moving it down to that far end where we do the feedings. So I have been trying a trick and putting a little bit of uh, worm chow up on the top here to see if I can't lure some of the worms out of the depth. And it has been working. I was able to um, grab a couple handfuls to kind of uh, supplement the amount of worms that were going in my outside bin last week. And uh, so that seems to be working. I'm going to continue doing that uh, before I, I close things up for the day. I think I am going to keep sprinkling a little bit on top so that I can start moving these worms from the finished castings down here and moving them to either another bin or to the business end of this bin. All right, so first things first, we haven't been in here for three weeks. And uh, a lot of people, you know, have commented on my aggressive fluffing methods, let's put it that way. I'm an enthusiastic worm bin fluffer. Um, and I'm going to show you, this is a really good example right now, today, of why I do this. So it is currently 75 degrees Fahrenheit in the bin, in the basement right now. I haven't added any water to this probably since maybe two to three months ago. But if you look at the moisture level on the bottom of the bin as I'm taking it up right now, this is pretty wet. So this bin doesn't have any drainage and it is, you know, it's an artificial eco ecosystem. So in order to keep oxygen in the depths of the bin as well as um, keep, keeping any sort of uh, built up gases like carbon dioxide or ammonia from building up in the bin, which is dangerous to the worms, you know, this isn't like... Uh, you know, your outside worms. See how muddy that is? And I haven't added any liquid whatsoever. But this bin, because there's, you know, no ventilation around the edges because it's solid uh, plastic here, these worms are kind of in jeopardy of having the bin go anaerobic in the deeper parts because this bin is a foot deep um, over here. So I'm just going to keep doing the fluffing here and mixing up the, the bin. I don't think we've done this for a couple of times. But I want to make sure that the bin is, you know, healthy and that the moisture stays homogenous throughout. That also will help the castings dry out and get to a consistency that I can harvest. So I don't do this every single time that I come in here. I do it probably every other month maybe. Make sure that the whole thing is, you know, a good even moisture. And then uh, per the wedge method, what I'm doing right now is I'm stacking the finished portion down here at the beginning of the wedge. So as I'm going through, sprouts go down to the food end, but you can tell there's still a good amount of worms in here. So I think, uh, I can't remember who it was who gave me the idea to put uh, a little bit of worm chow on the top and maybe lure the worms out of this part that I would like to harvest. It is spring. Today it's 80 degrees outside Fahrenheit. Um, 
but uh, it, you know it's probably going to be 60, 65 normally in the springtime. So um, the basement doesn't ever get much above 75. And that's what it is today. It is 75 in the basement today. I'm going to put my avocados back in here. I don't know if they'll make it or not, but who can have too many avocado trees in Illinois, right? So we're going to keep evaluating farther down this way. And we would expect to find more and more worms as we go this way because the food has been implemented more recently. So you can tell by the just the texture of it, there's little bits of stuff in there that the worms have not finished eating. So you can kind of also tell a difference in the color between here and here where the bedding's not completely worked over yet. But the density of the worms is much, much more. So we're just going to keep doing this, and I'm going to keep scooting the new bedding down so that we can keep keep the wedge moving and that is kind of the goal is to harvest down that way and then just continue to move over the less finished parts here all right so we're getting down to the end where we're getting closer to where the feeding was most recently so I'm just going to slow down just a little bit. This is where the seam is, and it always seems to get stuck in the seam here. So I definitely, this is very wet. So we definitely want to make sure that that gets turned up so that it does not go anaerobic on me. Okay, I'm going to move you down. If you're enjoying this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Okay, so here we are. We're getting to the end that has the most recent feeding. And I'm seeing a little bit of orange here because we did have a uh, windfall of pumpkin recently, courtesy of CC. Um, a lot of my feedings are courtesy of CC. Uh, she has had a very big garden and so you know has lots of leftovers you can see that is a nice size worm ball of the red wigglers the blue worms and the european night crawlers so i'm going to keep digging here until we actually find the food it's feeling pretty wet down at this end the pumpkin uh, has been apparently releasing quite a bit in the way of juices Got a little bit of dry paper on the top. We'll bury that as soon as we find the last feeding. But I'm seeing pumpkins, so we're definitely getting close. So let's see what we've got in the way of a worm ball. I expect there's probably close to 20 pounds of worms in this bin. And that's just a pure worm ball right there. Um, so for those of you that are freaked out that I'm not using gloves, sorry, um, but I don't have any cuts or anything on my hands. I'm fine. You know, if, if you or somebody who is, you know, immune compromised or something, yeah, definitely wear gloves. Because just like, you know, in the soil in your yard, there is bacteria and whatnot that can give you sores and whatnot. But because I am a healthy individual that does not have any immune problems, I feel comfortable not wearing gloves. If you don't, it's your worm bin. Do what you want. I'm not saying you have to do any one particular thing. So we've got some avocado pits. Looks like a piece of orange. And just tiny little bits of the pumpkin left. And this doesn't smell like anything. I know a lot of people think, oh, geez, you're putting your hands in rotten food. I think the part that is rotten or gross has been eaten by the, the critters in the bin uh, because we don't get a lot of smell out of this at all. Unless I forget to fluff or, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in here. So out of that big, huge feeding last time, that is all that is left. 
So we are going to take the old food and we're going to move it down here. All this dry paper can stay with the food. And then we're going to take all of these worms and the in progress stuff and we're going to scoot it over. So you can see why this is kind of a wedge. It's kind of like making a cake in reverse. You start down there and then you keep adding um, individual rows to your food or to the bin. So you can see, definitely see, the difference between the color here where there's the finished castings and here which is the in progress bedding and food. So that that is the wedge and what we are going to do is we are going to get some more bedding for this this new spot right here and we're going to get them fed back up. This might not be entirely um, I guess you can't see what it is. I was afraid that it had kind of turned into goo and that I wouldn't be able to tell what it was. But it looks like we've got some more lemons and some carrots and maybe some greens here. And then we are going to put some bedding on top of this. The warmer it gets, the more they go through the food. I find that they do slow down for me, this you know particular group of species of worms. When the basement gets below 60 degrees, I do find that it does slow down but it's 75 in the basement and they're ready to roll. This is my prepared bedding that has been aged here for probably two to three weeks and uh, I will put a little bit of the recipe there in the bottom. All right, so there we go. We have the brand new bedding here which is junk mail and cardboard. We have probably the last two feedings right here and then this part is ready to be harvested as soon as it dries out and so I'm not going to put a lid on it this time but I am going to do what I said I was going to do and we're going to put some worm chow down at this end and see if we can't draw those worms up okay so this is my worm chow that is cornmeal oatmeal wheat flour and bird seed so I'm going to see if I can't get them to come up. I'm going to scruff that in just a little bit. And then um, then this worm bin is, is ready to wait for the next time that we come and look in it. Uh, if you like the idea of this big huge bin and the wedge method, I have an entire playlist that I will put right there. If you want to see what we fed last time and what they've been doing, Last time, I will put that over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.